<laughs> what do we have here? What a bunch of cool stuff. Dang, I'm tiny. What? <laughs> do I know what I'm even doing? What am I doing? <laughs> With the teeth fits. Yeah! Greetings, program. So, Hankering Fernell here, yo, buddy. I. <laughs> Been here the whole time. Just had a uh, minor sequence of unfortunate and inconvenient events which chain reacted into a maelstrom of personal annihilation rebirth and rediscovery. That said, right now I'm drawing this little dragon guy. Yeah. Now, I'm not singing some unrelated song while I draw this little dragon guy. That's actually the sound he's making. Yeah. One of the Gregorian dragons. One of the lesser known dragon types. Welcome back to Runehammer, my friends. This is where it's at. This is where it all began. And this is where it's going to continue to begin. You'll see. It'll make sense. Ooh. <laughs> Smells funny. I resurfaced my void box, as it is so affectionately known, with a uh, bed liner. You know, like for a pickup truck? So it's highly durable now. Could be in a Ford commercial. But it smells a little strange. Before we get started, let's wet our whistles, shall we, with a little of the old blood wine. So I just take... My delicious cloudy IPA here that I've acquired from the local bistro. <laughs> Add a bit of cheap wine. Just enough to induce the Roush effect. <laughs> What's going on in this video? One! I'm back. Here's to you guys. Two! The metamorphosis has begun. What is the metamorphosis, you say? Well, today's topic is mind mapping. Now, I wanted to get into this concept. I'm not going to be giving you a specific piece of content to play at your table today because I have already delivered that stuff. It is the rescue of Stills the Goblin, which the whole adventure uh, was plotted out and uh, in the podcast on Patreon, so go check that out. But what was more interesting about plotting out that, that adventure was the sort of the crazy maelstrom, did I already say maelstrom? The storm of, of mental forces that came together and the way that they came together in a non-linear fashion using like sort of this flow charting madness that I did in my journal. And it became this adventure, it, it like narrated out really well and I felt really good about the adventure, but it was the way that it came together that was very interesting to me. So you guys know how we do it here at Runehammer. It's not just about the exact things you want to take to the table. It's also about being smarter, being more creative, being more honest, being more prolific, how we access bigger and more creative parts of our brains to utilize them for playing freaking D and D. Ha! So here's this page where it all happened. This is it. So you can see already it's a bit of a piece of chaos, right? There's kind of a portrait of a dragon in here. There's a portrait of Stills, and he's giving the thumbs up. And then I have kind of this vague first sense of a map, which is like there's an island over here, and then a thing, and then there's a dungeon here, and here's where Hathor Dur is from the last chapter. And really right there, I see my lay of the land, so to speak, and I started getting more interested in the idea. And then it became a matter of seeing what could or might happen or how players might escape or deal with challenges in this space. Now, what does this have to do with A, the metamorphosis, and B, mind mapping? Well, I'm trying to get to all that, but you know how I get, I get excited. Let me drink some of this. This looks like sewage. What the hell is the metamorphosis for starters? You guys, doing YouTube over a course of several years is very surreal and weird. You guys know Drunkens and Dragons and Runehammer. You've been here since the beginning or near the beginning. You have been loyal and awesome and badass the whole time. You guys have supported me on Patreon with Index Card RPG and all this crap, right? And evolving, growing, changing. Oh, there's the keyword, changing. 
YouTube has this strange thing, and you've probably seen some other videos about this, but there's a sort of a vortex to it. Like, you're expected to be the same person over the course of years. Now, none of you guys, as the audience members and the viewers, have been the same person over the past three and now coming up on four years. You haven't been the same person. You've been changing freely in private. I'm on TV, and I'm supposed to sort of be the same. Well... Here's the news flash. I am totally not the same. Now, recent events have gotten crazier. Ragnarok was crazier than anything I ever could have imagined. Even though I sort of asked for it, it got wildly out of control and really a lot of things changed. Also, the hobby has changed. The whole scene on YouTube has changed. Same with the popularity of D&D 5th edition growing. It also causes some elements to the hobby of the hobby to splinter as this grow, growth occurs and get interested in other shoots and other little areas. And this has always been what has happened to me. Now, whenever there's a new edition of D&D that comes out, we always get the stuff, we always run a campaign. But then as that winds down, there's so many more RPGs and so much more board gaming and card gaming to do and other stuff. I mean, there's four-wheeling to do. There's motorcycles, fishing, family, friends, running, hiking, planting plants, and growing trees. My point is there's a lot of things in life to do and a lot of change that occurs over the course of three to four years. The metamorphosis is something that I wanted to introduce to you guys in this video, mind mapping. Partially because mind mapping is representative of where I want to go with the channel a little bit, but also this is the first video that I've really put together in a few months as many of you have pointed out. <laughs> um, and so I wanted to let you know like where I'm at. Um, things are changing. I'm getting much more interested in writing and doing art and publishing rather than like sort of drinking a ton in this little room <laughs> and, and talking to a camera. Now I still wanna do that because I, I really do enjoy it, it's fun. But things are changing. The amount of talking head videos on YouTube has definitely become more prevalent. There's more to choose from for people watching this kind of content. And I think more quality content that's starting to come together. The audience is also congealing on certain brands, which you guys can figure out what those might be. But the consolidation or congealing of an audience into certain brands, it does change the competitive landscape. And I can't ignore that change and just sort of pretend like I'm the same person I was three, four years ago. I'm just not, things have changed a lot and my interests have concordantly changed. So the podcast is where I'm putting a lot of my sort of weekly RPG thinking, and that's going to continue to be the case. But you might see a little bit different tone on the channel here at Runehammer. I think I want to get more into talking about my, what used to be called my other projects, which are now my central projects. These include Index Card RPG, and the different sort of aspects and facets that go into that game, and why it's growing and sticking the publishing process, the writing process, and hopefully helping some of you out there who are hoping to become RPG publishers. This is really interesting to me. I went from being someone who's just kind of coming at it for fun to being a best-selling RPG on my first title. So it's like, whoa, I want to share some of that stuff with everybody. Also, you're going to see on Runehammer more of my sort of zany projects. The craziest one right now is called Junked, and it is a car combat game that I'm making for the Absolute Tabletop Convention in July. Now, at first I was just making it for the convention, but I started realizing it's really a fun, different game. It's not Index Card RPG, it's not D&D, it's not Car Wars, it's not any of that stuff. It's its own sort of board game. But the crafting project has gotten crazy, and it's also got a print and play component to it, and I'm just really excited about it, and I'm proud. It has nothing to do with D&D or fantasy or any of that stuff, but I want to share it with everyone here on YouTube. And more importantly, I want to share the process of what it's like to create this kind of stuff. This is where I want to take Runehammer. Ah! Come in here a little closer. Come in, just come in here. I am getting more interested in the cognitive side of RPG creation, of the creative lifestyle of writing and art and this wider topic. And those to me fit the concept of Runehammer even better than Drunkens and Dragons fit Runehammer. Now, it may not seem this way to you guys, but actually Runehammer came along a long time before Drunkens and Dragons and it was just sort of sitting in the background. 
but it really has become the sort of backbone of who I am and what I do and my lifestyle, really. Whereas Drunkens and Dragons was a sort of a beautiful, crazy moment. <laughs> and it was awesome. And I want you guys to keep watching and enjoying those videos. You still get a lot of great emails and messages about all that stuff. But my interests are changing, and I don't want to short shift or short change you guys as my stalwart audience by sort of stagnating. I still collecting, love collecting books and reading and living this sort of thoughtful RPG lifestyle, and that's what I want to do up here on YouTube. Okay, so that is, in a nutshell, a vast, verbose nutshell, what's going on with the metamorphosis. So brace yourself, YouTube, because Runehammer is about to assume a new form. <laughs> Why do I have a dry erase marker in my hand when I'm... Just hang... Oh, we are the froglings of Dorothrax. And I am the keeper of the froglings. Now, for today's lesson, we will be discussing frogling bathroom etiquette. Mind mapping. That's what today's episode is about here on Runehammer. Let's get into it, baby. As dungeon masters, all of us put tons of effort into mapping. So you come into a room. It's kind of like this. It has a little notch in it. Uh, it here's the hallway that we entered in. Can I get some heroes here, please? Boop, there we go. And then here's the far doorway. There's a, a thing right here with a couple of stairs and there's a weird statue. And then there's this little doodad and then there's a lever over here. Lots of our work as dungeon masters uses this technique, right? Here's a space, here's where I came in, here's where you're gonna go out and here's the thing that's going to happen. That's mapping. All of us do that every week as dungeon masters and we have mixed success, right? Sometimes you do it uh, off the cuff when you're at the game table, sometimes you do it ahead of time in your journal, sometimes you do it digitally, sometimes you find maps from awesome people like Two Minute Tabletop. Either way, a lot of DMing is mapping. It's finding the space, then putting stuff in the space, and then enter stage left, the characters. Here they come. What I want to introduce you to is mind mapping. Now, a lot of people ask me, how does your journal get like how your journal is? Your journal is really cool. Everybody's journal can be equally cool. It's actually quite simple. Mind mapping is a lot like mapping, only what you're doing is the same behavior through your idea. So the thing with mapping is that you choose a perspective, right? And it's almost always top down. Sometimes it's isometric. You know, you're working on these kind of diamond shapes and they kind of imply perspective and there's a little door and then here's some stairs and they have some more depth and they can be more interesting and fun but they can also be more limiting because you have occlusion problems and it's harder to draw and stuff like that, right? But mapping all works from a single perspective of a physical space. Mind mapping has absolutely no limits on perspective or even conceptual content, okay? So let's just run through how this sort of dawned on me that this is what I do. When I was planning the adventure, the rescue of Stills of Thusham, uh, basically I just started drawing in my journal and I started drawing the things that I knew I wanted in the adventure. So you can see here, I have a picture of Durathrax and I have a picture of stills, a little like portraits and then a bunch of garbage in between. Why is that? Well, I knew that I wanted those things. I know that I want Durathrax and I know that here's going to be uh, stills up here. Hello, I'm a goblin. All right, so I'm just going to say stills, right? This has become a mind map now. Now the simplest form of mind map would be like, Durathrax is here and there's an arrow and it says, wants to eat. And then it points to stills. Durathrax wants to eat stills. Oh, interesting. Well, what else does Durathrax do? And then I'm gonna go right down here, I'm gonna make an arrow, and then I'm gonna do a huge step that makes journals look good, which is put down bullets. Uh, lives on a pinnacle, uh, eats people, and then is guarding something. What could, what could she be guarding? Hmm, guarding a book of evil. I don't know, it just came to mind. And then finally, flies overhead. Part of mind mapping is that I can go, ooh, flies overhead. I'm gonna circle this bullet and I'm gonna go over here, whoop, and I'm gonna say, hey, look, here's Durathrax AI. 
And then we got one, two, three, four. And then boop, boop, boop. And then this one is fly up. Then I got breath. And then I've been reading some uh, different dragons, like one from Trudvang, and then this one from my old second edition book. And then there's something about flattery in there that I really liked, like dragons will stop attacking when they're flattered. I really like that. And then there's a constrictor dragon in Trudvang that I thought was really cool. So I'm gonna have some constriction. Okay, whatever. You know, that's kind of interesting. So I arrow from constrictor, and then I'm gonna do this like drawing for no damn good reason of the tail of Durathrax with like four little guys. Help, I'm, just, I'm being constricted. So instantly I'm like, well, is her body really long enough where she can do like a constrictor thing? Yeah, ooh, maybe that's what's weird about Durathrax. There's a new bullet, is elongated. In her old age, her legs have withered. Her body has become insanely long and it's like this winding thing. Oh, and you know what? I was doing this island where she lives in these pinnacles and her body has become so long, it's like weaving in and out of the pinnacles. Wait a minute. Okay, now I'm gonna see from a top view. Here are the pinnacles. Here is her super elongated dragon body going through the pinnacles almost like a river. And that could produce some kind of crazy mechanic when they're trying to fight her because her body is so long, it's like a river that flows in and out of these pinnacles that they can get up on top of. This is really cool. Maybe just the tip of the tail is the part that constricts and grapples. Right now, this is mind mapping. This is what I like to call visual thinking or mind mapping. Now, it's not some kind of earth-shaking new technique. This is dry erase thinking. This is visual thinking. I mean, this is as old as time, right? But I want to bring it out in the light, especially relative to planning adventures and designing stuff for D&D. I did some homework when it started dawning on me that I've always been a mind mapper. I've always been a visual thinker. And I was like, I wonder what the real sort of skinny is on mind mapping. And when you look mind mapping up, you find some really interesting stuff from history and current times about mind mapping. And I just want to throw you through that for a minute. Let's just take a journey into history and research with me for a moment, okay? And let's think about mind mapping. There are so many great examples of great thinkers who showcased the process of mind mapping or visual thinking. And these go all the way from the cave artists of Lascaux all the way and then more into the sort of familiar era Archimedes is one of the first visual thinkers. This is a guy who was famous for sitting and drawing diagrams in the sand where he would think out how to build inventions like his famous, um, you know, sailing laser. I don't know if you guys have ever read about that. The mirror laser, the mirror weapon that goes on a boat and everything. Anyway, Archimedes actually perished when he was sitting and drawing in the sand and the Romans were taking over and they said, hey, get up and get out of here. We're rounding everybody up. And he said, hey, quit interrupting my drawing. And he got stabbed. Anyway, so don't get stabbed. One of the most famous visual thinkers, a true mind mapper, is Leonardo da Vinci. Now he really like crystallized this way of thinking. It has no bounds. This way of thinking has no sequence. It involves as much science as it does art. It involves music, anatomy, writing, drawing, uh, studying real life, as well as drawing from imagination in a, a sort of a a morass or a, just a sort of a, a mess or tangle of concepts, not necessarily knowing what the end of this concept is, but just letting the mind express itself. Everybody knows about those great drawing sets that Leonardo da Vinci did because the way that they flow through a topic, he wasn't trying to get one particular drawing. He was just exploring topics and therefore exploring his genius. Another really famous one is Tesla. So everybody knows about Tesla, but what's a little less known is that he actually would think visually to get through problems. So instead of um, a more traditional scientific method, which would involve like more math, writing, data, charts, and stuff like this, Tesla was actually known to think in triangles, spheres, you know, how can these things align? How do they look on a piece of paper? And then he would write, and then there'd be some math at a crooked angle. And if you look this stuff up, it's absolutely amazing. So another visual thinker who was using mind mapping. A lot of people think this way. Why is this some kind of thing to talk about? It turns out, based on research that's been done in the past few decades, 65% of people think visually. Now, the, the counterpoint to visual thinking is what's often called auditory sequential learning, which is where you hear things and write facts down or read facts in a sequence 
and retain them and you know reach realization. That's actually the minority of people. That's 35% of people. But we are often told in our hobby, in RPGs, that that's how we're supposed to process information. We're supposed to look at a paragraph of text and then a list of NPCs and then a map and then there's some descriptions of events that follow and we're supposed to absorb this in a nonlinear fashion and present it at a table where improvisation is critical to the process. It's crazy. So I would propose that mind mapping and formless visual thinking is more useful and more transferable between people as a way to convey ideas than the traditional, here is a paragraph, here is a list, here's another paragraph, here's a map, here's a thesis. A few researchers too who are interesting here of note for those of you who want to do more homework on the subject. So first you have Betty Edwards, one of my all-time favorite right brain thinkers, wrote a book called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. Absolutely fantastic book of how to break your mind from its desire to create objects when you're drawing and more sets you free to think about the act of drawing itself rather than imitating and creating objects. And it's a, it's a wonderful exploration into how the right brain functions. Now next we have Rudolf Arnheim. Rudolf Arnheim, who's actually sort of credited as the primary researcher and collator of data on visual thinking. So you should look up what he did. Stuff's amazing. Einstein, Thomas Edison, Frank Lloyd Wright are all uh, infamous visual thinkers, meaning that they would think in nonlinear ways using both maps, diagrams, drawings, poetry, music, taking a walk outside, riding a bicycle, coming back in, weird squiggly lines that point to different things. You guys have all seen this, you know, a beautiful mind kind of thing. Um, or that, that weird TV show, The Good Doctor, where um, Norman Bates like solves, you know, mysteries of the medical world. <laughs> Consider the art of, of mind mapping in your work. I am a diehard journaler. I do all my character sheets, all my maps, all my adventures, everything this way in these formless storms of thought. And I hope that by the time I reach the table or I reach the camera, something congeals from this madness that you might call entertainment. <laughs> That's it for mind mapping. I wanted to come back to YouTube, partially talk about metamorphosis and tell you guys, hey, I've been here all along. It's just... Ah, I'm only one man. I'm only a mortal man. We'll see you at Gen Con this year, everybody. So we'll be talking more about that as the year goes on. But that is about what I wanted to talk about. That's most of the main stuff. I'm, I'm back here. I'm behind the dragon. Whew. Something about drinking sewage just gets you feeling like you're drinking right out of the sewer. That's tasty. All right, strength, honor, and sewer Delicious. It's actually delicious. I don't know why I keep calling it sewer. That's blood wine. I'm Hank or Fernale. This is Runehammer. You guys are cool. I'll see you next time and uh, stay tuned because the metamorphosis has only begun. So glowy. <laughs>